All right, should we get started? Awesome. Well, hello everyone. My name is Mina Harris and I am a first time author and I'm very honored to be here with all of you today to read you my book, Kamala and Maya's Big Idea. Uh, it just came out in June, so I'm still just riding this wave and this high of of being a new author and it's been um, been such an incredible experience in, in part because I get to meet folks like you and, and read my book um, to kids and, and parents all over the world. Uh, it's one of the you know silver linings of COVID and the fact that we're all at home that I'm actually able to connect with so many more people than I may have otherwise been able to. So thank you for joining. Um, to introduce myself quickly, I'll, also I'm a mom of two amazing little girls age two and four and um, this book, I really, you know, wrote it for them initially and, and becoming a new mom, I was really thinking about what kind of parent I wanted to be. I think like a lot of us do and I was really reflecting on the fact that I grew up in a pretty unique family uh, with a, a lot of women, a lot of strong, powerful women um, who taught me so many important values. And I was really thinking about how to pass that on to my daughters, even though they live in a different type of family that's not only women. We've let in some men along the way. So, you know, really thinking about um, how to do that. And that also, you know, coincided with reading books to my now older daughter um, for the first time and, you know, reading the classics like Good Night Moon and where the wild things are and, and brown bear which are really wonderful pieces of children children's literature but also feeling like my daughters weren't represented on on the pages right they, I, they, I didn't see characters that had brown skin or curly hair and so the issue around diversity and representation in children's books has become really important to me and it's another reason why I wrote this. I wanted them to be able to see themselves literally, you know, represented on the pages. And I took a lot of care in working with the illustrator um, on those, you know, very things and getting their, you know, skin color uh, brown and their, their hair curly. And um, this one in particular, that's, that's Kamala, but uh, her hair is in a style that my daughters often wear their hair and two little pigtails. So, Needless to say, it is very uh, special to me and very important to me, and I'm so excited to read it to you. And um, don't forget to stick around after because I will be answering questions. All right, let's get started. Kamala and Maya's, sorry, we have a ring light situation, but I'll try to reduce the glare. Kamala and Maya's Big Idea, written by Nina Harris, that's me, and illustrated by Ana Ramirez Gonzalez. All right, we have to maneuver here a little bit. Can everybody see? All right. You know what, we know what should be out there, Kamala asked her sister Maya. Us, said Maya. A slide, said Kamala. And a swing, Maya added. A playground, they shouted together. Kamala and Maya had an idea. It was a very good idea and a very big idea they were going to need help. Wouldn't it be great if there was a courtyard, a playground in the courtyard, Maya said? That does sound nice, Mommy agreed. How can we make that happen, Kamala asked. Well, I suppose the first step would be to ask the landlord, the person who owns the building. So Kamala wrote a letter and Maya drew a picture and they went to see the landlord to discuss their idea. The landlord thought about it for less than a second. Mm, I don't think so, no. <sighs> that was not the answer they wanted, but they weren't ready to give up. That night, the sisters tried to think of ways to turn a no into a yes. They asked the other kids in the building if they wanted a playground in the courtyard. Did they? Of course they did. And they had ideas too. Let's have a teeter-totter and a basketball hoop and flowers. So Kamala wrote a longer letter and they went to see the landlord together. All right, should we read this letter? The letter reads, Dear Landlord, Right now, the courtyard of our building is empty and no one uses it. If there were swings, kids could fly high. If there was a sandbox, kids could build. 
If there was a slide, kids could go so far, so fast. Can you build it, please? The landlord thought about it for less than five seconds. A project this big is expensive. We don't have money for that. Do your parents know you're here? <sighs> this was not the answer they wanted, but Kamala was not ready to give up. If we ask our parents and do it all ourselves, can we fix up the courtyard? The landlord thought about that for a whole 10 seconds. Finally, he shrugged. If you can do it yourselves, sure. This wasn't exactly the answer they wanted, but it was a start. The kids all spoke to their parents about their ideas for the courtyard. They hung up posters and knocked on neighbors' doors. But they got the same answers from everyone. I'm sorry. Wow, that is a big job. Ugh, wish I could help. Which they knew meant no, no, no. But then Mr. Green stopped to talk. I work construction and I could maybe get some scrap lumber and sand for a sandbox. Oh, really? Kamala said, yes, exclaimed Maya. Okay, I'll try. It wasn't a yes, but right now maybe was the sweetest word they had ever heard. Maybe gave them hope. The next weekend, maybe turned into yes. The kids all helped measure and Mr. Green cut the boards. Then they sanded and hammered and sanded some more and then came the actual sand. They were all thanking Mr. Green when Ms. Lopez stopped to talk. I work at a garage. Maybe they have an extra tire for a teeter-totter. <gasps> Another maybe. In the weeks that followed, lots of I don't knows turned into maybes and then yeses. We're making progress. No one could do everything, but everyone could do something. Kamala and Maya wanted everyone to celebrate the new playground, so they made another big poster inviting their neighbors to a potluck party. There were hot dogs and hummus, spicy chicken and potato salad, strawberries and brownies and lemonade. Mrs. Flora set up a sprinkler for the kids to run through and Mr. Green brought the music. Kamala admired the new playground, but she noticed there was still one thing missing. Hmm, I wonder what it is. No one knew how to make a slide but Ms. Flores knew where they might buy one. I teach at Emerson Elementary and they're redoing the play playground. Maybe we could buy the old slide? This was a different kind of maybe. A how can we afford that maybe? But now everyone was trying to find a way to turn that maybe into a yes. These brownies are delicious. Maybe we could have a bake sale? We can all bring toys and books and have a sidewalk sale. That's a great idea. No one could do everything, but everyone could contribute something. When the slide arrived at last, Maya and Kamala got the first ride. The landlord was impressed. I want to shake your hands, girls. He said, you did a good job. You all did a good job. Kamala and Maya had an idea. It was a very good idea and a very big idea. And with a lot of help, they made it happen. Hooray for Kamala and Maya. Hooray for the Persisters. What's next, Kamala? Kamala, looking up, said, I'm wondering what the view is like from the roof. The end. <laughs> That's the whole book. And in the back, I have 
some very special pictures and I'll tell you about them really quickly. So this picture is of my mom and aunt when they were young girls and I just remember staring at that picture on my grandmother's bookcase for years and years and it was so special to me and they, you know, they look like they just conquered the world, right? They just look so fierce and that very photo ended up inspiring the cover. See that? They're standing back to back the way they were sitting back to back. And then this picture is of the two of them with their bikes and some pretty cool outfits. And I just felt like that one was pretty iconic and had to go in there, uh, really showing off the you know two personalities. So I love that picture. And then this one also is so, so special to me. That is a picture of my grandmother who was a, a very important, huge figure in all of our lives and uh, it's really because of her in many ways um, why I wrote this book. I wanted to memorialize all of the values and, and lessons that she taught me around the idea that no one can do everything but everyone can do something. And all of us have a responsibility to do something no matter how small. And so I really wanted to uh, pass that on to my own daughters and, and obviously to kids all over the world through this book. And then finally, this photo is of the three of us uh, obviously as adults, uh, and it is from when my aunt Kamala announced uh, that she was going to run for president uh, last, gosh, it feels like 10 years ago now. I guess it was back in uh, January of last year. So that's my book, and thank you all for, for listening. I'm going to turn the comments on so we can do a little Q&A. See who's... I see lots of hearts. Thank you for the love. Thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate it so much. It's um, unreal to be an author and to become an author and it, uh, just to you know see children holding my book and um, reading my book. It's just one of the most special things in the world. And um, it's just so cool to you know see how it's resonating with people. I've uh, had so many young readers um, react in lots of different ways, but one of the most, um, I think, fun reactions is that they're like, oh my God, Maya and Kamala are real people, right? They, they exist in the world. They're actually um, real. And not only that, you know, they're doing, they're still doing cool stuff. They went from uh, trying to build this playground to, to doing more and more. And I'm, I'm wearing my ambitious sweatshirt today. And you know, that last scene, right, um, of her saying, I'm wondering what the view is like from the roof. That's all about ambition and ambition is a good thing. And in my opinion, it's about finding your purpose and going after it, finding your big idea and, and going after it and, and teaching kids that uh, they can do that, right? And they have power. Um, how has your style changed with my girls since quarantine? These questions are coming fast. Um, so quickly, uh, what's my Instagram name? It's Mina at M-E-E-N-A, very simple. Uh, someone asked how my style has changed. Um, I would say, you know, we already are pretty casual and relaxed and, um, you know, so my sweatshirts are, are, are easy and, uh, you know, they have good messages on them. And then for my kids, um, you know, I think Janie and Jack is such a great example of just both an iconic, um, you know, style, but also children's wear that is comfortable and is made out of, you know, breathable cotton and, um, you know, things that they can just be around the house in or, or be running around outside. Um, and, and so I love being able to have them look, you know, cute and put together if we're, if we're doing that. Um, sometimes they look like a hot mess. Um, but hey, even when that happens, if you throw a little cute outfit on them, it like kind of makes things a little bit better. Um, so we really like, you know, uh, uh, comfort, but also um, thinking about style. And it's so fun now, especially with the older one, to see how she's expressing her personal style, um, which usually includes like a lot of layering and, you know, putting on three skirts or a dress and a skirt underneath and then leggings underneath that. Um, so it's super fun, you know, fashion and expressing yourself through clothing is um, a huge um, thing for me. And it's, it's really fun to see how they on their own are you know, really picking that up and, and thinking about their own style. Um, so I'm really appreciative for Janie and Jack, you know, for supporting me as an author and, and, um, and my book and also um, just making really cute, affordable, um, easy to wear kids clothing, right? It's not sort of, 
too much going on where you can just slip it in, slip them on and, and, and feel like it's easy, but cute. So that's one of the big things that um, are, are important to me. And I really like Janie and Jack for that reason. Um, I'm just looking here. Sorry. The questions go so fast and then they just disappear. Um, you know, I, I think someone earlier asked, how am I talking to my children about racism? And I'm really happy that somebody asked that question because I think, um, you know, I'll just give some more background about the book, which is the, my, my launch week, my pub day was June 2nd and it ended up falling in the middle and of the, one of the most important protests in, in, in history, right? Um, one of the biggest, uh, you know, acts of civil unrest and protests that we've seen since the sixties. And it was such an important moment and it's what I was focusing on. It's what I was teaching my children about. And it felt at the, at the time really weird to like talk about my little kid's book, which obviously was something I was really anticipating and proud of, but I almost felt like I, I didn't want to talk about it because it felt so, you know, insignificant. Um, compared to what we were seeing and what was going on. And I kind of sat with it for a little bit. Um, sorry, somebody asked me, I see the title again. It's Kamala and Maya's Big Idea. And I, I, I sat with it and I, you know, I talked to uh, friends and, and family and um, what I really kind of came out of that feeling was that it almost felt like it couldn't have been more important in that, in that moment and, and continues to be, right? And I, I started having lots of conversations with parents about how do we talk to our children about this? How do we explain to them what's going on? How do we encourage them to speak up when they see uh, injustice and to know that they have the power and ability to do that? And in my family, as I said, I was taught that that was my responsibility, right? And, and my duty to do that. And so what I really learned uh, and, and what's been an amazing but totally unexpected sort of way of, of talking about and really using this book is, is to have it as, you know, a building block to start those conversations. Um, I think, you know, it goes without saying that as a parent, it's always, you know, you're trying to figure out what is an age appropriate way, right, of talking about what can be very serious, complex issues with small children. And at least with mine who are very young. And so talking to them explicitly about racism and what that means, you know, we have to sort of build build towards that, right? Um, but a book like this and, and so many others, I have to say, I mean, um, there's so many other resources, I think, that are like this for parents that really can serve as a building block um, and a tool to really start those conversations. Um, you know, to answer the question, somebody asked again, what is the name of the book? It's Kamala and Maya's Big Idea. Um, to answer you know, the question directly, to me, one of the most important things that we can do as parents uh, to talk about what's happening in the world right now, to talk about racism, is to be honest. I think we often underestimate um, you know, what kids can understand and, and relate to and, and, and their insights, right? I mean, one of the most extraordinary things about becoming a parent is just realizing um, the wisdom of my, my girls and you know, seeing the world through their sort of unfiltered view has been one of the most... Um, amazing and astonishing things. And so I think, again, there's a way to do it so that it's age appropriate, but, you know, starting from a place of, I'm going to talk to you about this stuff, right? And, and that's definitely the way that I was raised and, and what I as a parent have hoped to really replicate in my household. Um, I grew up as sort of like this super only child, <laughs> I like to say. Um, as I said, I grew up with, you know, three strong, powerful women. And my grandmother was effectively a single mom. I had a single mom. So just these incredible women. Um, but as a result, I was like, talk to you like an adult, right? Um, when we had dinner table conversations, I was included, but I was also expected to, you know, contribute basically at, at you know, no matter um, how young I was and I wasn't babied. And so I think, you know, being able to uh, you know, have those sorts of conversations with our kids and, and really understand that they, you know, can take a lot away, away from it is important. Um, and so I've been trying my best. I think there's no sort of right way about it. You have to do it in a way that makes you feel, you know, comfortable. But I think the second thing I would say, you know, the first is just to be honest with them, um, honest and age appropriate, obviously. And then, you know, second, um, to, to keep it up, right? I think we, we're having a lot of important conversations around things like supporting black owned businesses and you know women owned businesses um, and it just can't happen one day out of the year or um, you know one Tuesday. Uh oh, hi, I'm back, sorry, my phone was being uh, acting up. Anyway, just you know, if you're gonna wanna have those conversations, you have to commit to it. It's a, 
Um, it's a long process and it frankly, for us as adults and individuals, I believe that it is ongoing and it never ends. And I think we should take the same approach with our kids that you have to be consistent and keep it up and, and really show them that, you know, it's something that you care about and that's important. That's a, a signal to them as well. Um, somebody said, how would you describe your personal style? Uh, you know, I think <laughs> what have, I've described it before as kind as like hippie chic or like Birkenstock chic. Basically, like I love to feel like I have something going on where, you know, I feel like stylish, but I like comfort. I'm a mom. Like I, you know, you're running after kids. The, you know, the moment they, they touch you, whatever you're wearing is dirty. Like I need things to be washable and, and easy. Um, and again, I mean, that's why I love JD and Jack. It's like super cute stuff. It's super easy. It's affordable. Uh, you know, if they, everything kind of just like, maybe this is TMI, but I'm sure other parents can relate, but I just feel like everything kind of almost smells like milk all the time. Um, no matter how many freaking times I wash it, uh, no matter how much vinegar I use to like get the smell out. So, you know, it's, it's just easy stuff that still looks cute. Um, I think somebody asked again about, you know, like how we adjusted in the pandemic. And one of the big things is like sometimes they look like a little bit of a hot mess and it's cause we're letting, you know, things are, you know, we're letting, letting go. Some of the structures got out the window in terms of like doing the hair every day and all that. So being able to like reach for something where they, you know, we're maybe having a hot mess day, but they still look kind of cute. Like it just gives you that little, you know, boost that I think we are all craving and needing in this moment. Um, somebody said that they just ordered the book and that they hadn't heard of it until now and that's so amazing thank you i love that um it's so fun getting to meet new people and readers um someone asked uh, what was your daughter's reaction to your book and will you make it a series so my older daughter's first reaction like when we finally like sat down to read it and it was this like big moment that i put like so much on that i was like this is a big thing i'm finally reading it to her her first reaction was um can i write the next one with you so we are uh not lacking in ambition in our household as i said um even with my four-year-old so i told her uh you know next time of course you can be my co-author so um that was the first reaction and then the second i think is similar to somebody asked again the name of the book, it's Kamala and Maya's Big Idea. Um, the second reaction I think is similar to what I described, um, what I described before about what I'm hearing from other young readers, which is this sort of like surprise and delight at learning that Kamala and Maya are real people, right? That they're not, you know, sort of figures in history um, that are not alive today and, and with us today. And uh, I think in the same way, Obviously, it's very personal. They know that it's about grandma and auntie. That's Kamala. Or grandma is Maya and auntie is Kamala. They know that. But I think it, it's, you know, it, it speaks to them in a way where they feel like they can relate to it. And, you know, this goes back to uh, what I was speaking to earlier about diversity in children's books. And I, I really saw that with my own kids. And it's what inspired me to write this is that representation matters, right? You can't be what you can't see and what i saw with my girls is that what they were seeing that's what they wanted to be right we read a book about jazz and the next day the my daughter wants to be a jazz musician right um we had a family member running for president and who's now uh you know a, a vice a, a running on the um vice gosh i'm getting all of the titles mixed up she was running for president and now is the vice presidential um nominee and you know, the next day my, my daughter's telling me I wanna be a president when I grow up and now she wants to be a vice president, right? So this stuff matters and um, it's small, it, it may even feel insignificant, but I can't tell you just how real it became for me uh, being a new parent and just seeing literally before my eyes the effects that this have that this has on my, my children. And um, you know, uh, I, I wanna encourage in her too um, that you know she can do and be anything just as I was taught. And so she is now saying she wants to be an author. Um, there's a really cute story where you know she was at uh, playtime at, at preschool and one of her teachers texted me and said, um, she, she told me she couldn't come to playtime because she was so busy finishing her book. And this was when it was a, a particularly busy period for me trying to get the book done. Um, so that's one thing that happened that was so cute. And um, then 
right after that, I was, you know, upstairs doing something at home and she runs up and says, mommy, mommy, I need tape. I need tape. And I'm like, why do you need tape? Um, and she had all these piles of paper and she said, I need to tape my book together. And it like took a moment for me, like a second for it to click, like, oh my God, you know, she, she, she sees that mommy is an author and mommy's writing a book and now she's an author and she's writing a book. So it's just, um, it's so special. And as I said, you know, this stuff, kids just soak up everything. And um, there's so much more that we can do to show them um, representation and to show them themselves represented on, on books. And there's so much work that we need to do, but I'm really proud, you know, to be a part of um, this sort of new generation of, of authors of color and illustrators of color. My, uh, it, it's, you know, the statistics around that are, are, are just as bad. I remember it was 2018, the, um, the stat is that there were just as many books about animals as there were about uh, black, Latinx, and indigenous char human characters combined. So we still have a long way to go. Um, and I'm really grateful to be a part of that um, change. Someone said, uh, uh, how am I finding time for self-care? <sighs> that is a tough question. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys that um, I've never been very good at like the self-care and balancing um, you know, my sleep with everything that I'm doing. And I have to admit to you that this time in particular um, is probably one of the busiest, craziest times maybe in my whole entire life. Um, the thing that though I have gotten better at is just like checking in with myself and being aware that like burnout is real and understanding when I'm, you know, kind of approaching that and, and knowing when I need to just like take a step back and, and learning that, you know, as busy as we all are and as impossible as it seems to fit in time for self care, that there are ways to kind of like get it wherever you can find it and take it wherever you can find it, whether it's like hiding from my kids for 10 minutes and just like sitting down and closing my eyes. Um, sorry, that sounds so like that is the bare minimum, right? But you know, like it's something. And I, I in checking in with myself, know that it makes a difference. Um, you know, it's sort of like whatever you can control, however you can get it. Other things are just like drinking a ton of water. I, I know that like staying hydrated is healthy and important. And so like I can control that. I, I normally have a huge, huge jug of, of water. Um, sorry, I know this is not super environmentally friendly, but I normally have like a really huge jug of water and I try to get through it. Um, by the end of the day, I'll actually like literally put it on my bathroom sink so that when I wake up in the morning and I go to brush my teeth, it's like drink as much water as you possibly can, you know, to start the day. And then I feel like I've accomplished something. So, you know, it's hard. Um, we're busy parents and, <clears throat> you know, um, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I have to remind people that, you know, um, it's, it's hard and, you know, be uh, easy on yourself, recognize that this is not normal. Um, I think, you know, lots of folks are, are dealing with homeschooling and, and going back to school and it's just, it's so hard. And um, I think folks are feeling squeezed and pressured and you just have to like find that grace and be kind to yourself. And like I said, for me, that sometimes means that my children's hair is like, just we didn't brush it that day but like i get my little janie and jack dress and i put it on them and i'm like oh, okay everything's great everything's fine <laughs> we've you know we're doing okay today and just finding those moments and those things that can bring you that you know joy or peace or whatever you know um i just we i have to i this is for me <laughs> i'm telling this to myself just as much as i am to all of you um it's just a hard time and um don't forget like it's still going on i think i see some folks almost acting as if it's over and it's not, and it's it's gonna last longer, you know, we're all still adjusting um, to a total unknown. So I just, I send my love to to folks, um, you know, who are struggling and, and are, are uh, trying to get by. And I think I, I'll say again, thank you to Janie and Jack for hosting, you know, readings like this. That's for me as a parent, being able to access easily, you know, content and other engaging activities for my kids um, is so helpful and there could not be enough content in the world to you know entertain them and to educate them and to be resources for them so um, i'm really grateful that janie and jack is using their platform in that way um, to to do good so thank you and i i'm turning uh my computer on quickly because i have a couple housekeeping things that i don't want to forget um and please you know keep asking questions if you have them 
but I want to um, do a little plug that you can purchase my book online at harpercollins.com. It's called Kamala and Maya's Big Idea, authored by me, Mina Harris. And if you use the code GOODBOOKS20, that's GOODBOOKS20, it's all caps, GOODBOOKS20, uh, sorry, let me say that again. It's all caps, good books, and then the number 20. So G-O-O-D-B-O-O-K-S-2-0. You can get free shipping at harpercollins.com. So thank you. I just see tons and tons of hearts and, and heart eyes and love, and I just feel so loved. And this, these things always just fill me up. Any opportunity to, to share this um, with the world is just so special to me. So I cannot thank you all enough for joining and uh, thank you again to Janie and Jack for this opportunity. It, it really means the world. And um, I just wish everybody well and everyone um, take care. I will see you on the internets. All right, thanks guys. Thanks you everyone.